Mechanic Pete here. It's been a while. Uh, we've been, everybody had some kids, and now we're back. We're going to shoot a few more videos. Uh, this one, we're working on a Jeep Grand Cherokee here. Uh, the fan stopped blowing, which is the resistor. It's usually down here underneath the heater box. But before we get started, let's disconnect the battery. There we go. Battery's disconnected. We don't have any juice running to the vehicle, so now we can go down and clip our wires down on the little resistor motor. I'm going to show you how to replace that. A little black box down here with a plug in it right here. So it's held on by two screws. There's one right over here, and the other one, it's kind of blind. It's back up in here. But his little plug is melted into it. So what we have to do is replace the whole harness here and then there's another plug that's on it back here and we're going to splice these wires in. That way we don't have to take the whole heater assembly out to be able to plug in up above. So let's get to work. There you go. You can see the other harness. And you can see how that goes way back up in there. There is no way unless you got some little smurf hands to be able to fit back up in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut the insulation back on this one. That looks like a little just tape. Cut that back, expose the wires. We're going to butt cut, connect them together. The, the correct way to do this would be to solder them to get a good connection. But uh, if you take a look outside, it's kind of cold today. So that's usually when you notice that your heater fan's not working. Or if you've got the air conditioning, you want to be nice and cool. So. Here's the new unit. You can get it in the mail if you order it through Amazon. It comes with this. And did you have to order the pigtail with it? Yeah, that was separate. Separate pigtail. So you have Wire to order harness. this separate. Made in Taiwan. Taiwan's finest right here. But what happened to his is this piece is melted into the plastic right here. Underneath here, there's like little resistor springs that help with your um, the fan for different speeds is what it runs through. These are little cooling fins, so the air blows across these to keep everything kind of cool in there. It's a little aluminum block. So what we're gonna do is this one, you have to splice it in anyway. And this one, we're just gonna clip these wires right here and wire it up underneath there. But we'll do this one first so that we don't have this box in our way. Let's uh, get the cutting. I'll show you what you need here. So right here, this guy's melted in there. We're gonna clip it right about here. We don't need all this wire. This is a lot of wire to have tied up under here. So we're just gonna clip this one right about there. It's a good six inches. And then we'll butt connect that up onto that one. And we'll work on this one here next. This way. So these are some wire strippers right here. You can strip your wires off. I'll show you on this one here. We'll cut the wire first. About uh, eight inches, six inches. Like that. We'll take the ends. Find your size, your gauge of your wire, right about here, and just strip off about a quarter inch of it, and just push it like that. Then you twist these up, give a nice twist on it so that makes it easier to put your butt connector on. This came with butt connectors in the box. And these actually we can heat shrink. It has a, you can get butt connectors where they have this little end on them like this. And that, if you take a lighter and light that, I'll show you that here in a second. It'll heat shrink up around the around it. This is a butt connector that's not heat shrinkable. This one's just open. So this is the one that you could use inside the vehicle where we're not gonna get any moisture or corrosion or stuff around it. This one you could use it on the outside of the vehicle also so that um, uh, the moisture and road salt and stuff like that, you heat these up and it seals the wire up so you're not gonna get any contamination inside of your wiring. Right here, we're gonna use these. They're a little tighter crimp. I have these in my collection. I'm gonna twist that. Make sure your wire is down into that. I mean, you don't have a whole lot of wire going in there. And you crimp that little metal guy right there. Give it a good squeeze. You're not gonna hurt it. What you want is to make sure that's stuck on there and it's not gonna come off. So we're gonna go ahead and do that to these other two here. And then I'll show you down underneath. We'll strip that one. If you get these too long, you can always just trim a little bit of the uh, copper wire off. Because you, what you want is you make sure that the insulation is all the way down inside of these guys. Got your lighter on you. 
Let me show you about how this heat shrink works on these little butt connector heat shrink guys. Just get that, just get it right up there. Heat gun will work, lighter works, little butane torch works. Just yeah. like that and it seals right up on the back of the wire to where no moisture can get up in there. We don't really need to use these on the inside. I'm just showing you this just so that you know if you're doing something like on a trailer or tail lights, something like that. These are really nice to use. The best way though is to solder your joints and then use a heat shrink tube that goes over it. But these are always good in a little pinch. All right, now that we got that little pigtail wired up, we're gonna go ahead and cut this one. We've cut that one, cut these two here. So what we want to make sure though, is we get these lined back up. So we have a black here and a red there. Yeah, let's see what that means. Kind of a brown. So if you cut them out just far enough, like this, you can see how that, that'll line back up for your plug. What I'm talking about is the way this goes in here, we gotta make sure this wire gets attached to the red this one here goes to the black on the left and this middle wire here goes to this guy right there otherwise it won't work okay this is kind of in my way since we're going to be working up under the dash so i'm just going to go ahead and cut this all out right now give myself some room cut it down close right here right like that there we go there's the bad part you can see okay, now so the reason russ's quit working was because this was melted in there and it quit the fans quit working so if you can get this wire out, sometimes you don't need to buy this $70 box. You can just buy the $10 pigtail, wire that in, and you should be golden, be able to put it right back into your old box and your fans will work. But if you do put this on and then your fans don't work, you might need the box. And if they don't work after that, you got other problems. So sucks being cold. Yeah, so that's, why, that's why I grew the beard. So since we're under here, I'm gonna go ahead and strip these two. The reason that we cut these is because we can't get to the top where this thing's connected. And we don't feel like pulling the whole heater box and dash back to find out where it's connected at. So this was the next best idea. So here's our new box. And there's the plug that goes in on it. You can see where that thing's mounted like this. We've got maybe that much wire hanging out. So obviously that guy goes up and around somewhere back behind here. We tried to pull the glove box out and look behind there and it's just a wall of plastic. And we tried coming through the side. We looked through the top up here and we didn't see a real easy way to get to it. And being it's cold, we're gonna butt connect it. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to cut this pigtail off this guy. You do this, you can't, re you can't return it. So that one's just a little longer than I like. See how the, it doesn't quite go all the way in. So you can leave a little exposed wire right there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take our little our nippers here and just nip off a little bit extra wire. Then that'll put that plastic insulation right up inside there. It's a beautiful thing. The easiest way is to set your plug. If you happen to do this plug like we did, set this one right here like it. See there's a little nipple on it, nipple here. We're gonna start with the red wire. So we'll just take this guy and go straight to him. Here. Oh, you're doing that so you know you're hooking up the right wires. Exactly. So I just moved the camera back right now a little bit just so I can get under here and work with two hands, get this thing wired up. All right, that one's all wired up. Now we're going to wire our box up in, underneath there. Pretty self explanatory on this one. Red to red, black to black. So I noticed on this clip right here, we've got 
that little green guy, if you see those, it won't let you push down to release it or install it. So what you want to do is just push that up a little bit, like yay. Now we can install it into our plug. Keep that pushed back. Clip that in, push that in. That'll keep it from backing out. You can't pull it out, so now we're set. Well, we, we could test it also while it's still hanging here because it's just the heater vent. It's just gonna blow a little air down there. That way we know that that thing works. So we turn the key on. We're just gonna check it and make sure that this works. Off, we turn this on a little bit and it should just blow for any of the positions down here. Oh, very nice. Sounds like a jet engine. Blow. It's gone from suck to blow. We've got two little <laughs> screws, the ones I took out. We're gonna have a little bit of extra wire hanging down. Oh, I gotta take my hat off again, huh? There we go. Okay. So it has a little hole right here on the side of the right there. See the two holes? That's because we got a pin right up here on the on that. If you aim back up, you see that right there? Yep. There's a little pin, and that pin goes in that extra hole and then the screw goes through the other hole. That's so that you get this aimed in there the right way so that your gasket will seal it up and you don't get air blowing down on your feet all the time. So, I'm gonna take this. Gotta find that hole, there it is. Just wanna be careful when you're screwing this in. It is plastic, so don't need to hey, gangster you it have in. Any idea where Despicable Me Too might be? No, I was looking for that last night. I don't know where. I think it's down in the basement. Kids actually, are looking Chris. for movies. All right, there we go. That fixes the wiring harness and the blower resistor on a Jeep Grand Cherokee. What year? Oh one. Oh one is what this is. I'm not sure. Should what be the same. Are the same. Same as not, But uh, usually they're all down in that spot, and it's about the same thing. I know on a Dennis's uh, Wagoneer or something like that, it's on the front and held in by two bolts, and it just clips in it. It's a lot smaller. Some of them are bigger like this, but uh, you never know what you're going to get yourself into. But just trying to help everybody out. So, Mechanic Pete, signing off. Mm -hmm.